Hi, I'm Suze Shaner with Sage Leadership Strategies, and I'm your host today of Community Forum. And my guest is Amy Wynn, the Executive Director of the American Mural Project. Welcome, Amy. Hi, Suze. How are you? I'm great. Thanks for joining us. So I want to let our guests know that the American Mural Project is a museum and the work in it is about honoring and amplifying the American worker through the arts, education and community. And uh, I understand your tagline is all work matters. Yeah, well, that is definitely one tagline, and it's one that really speaks to the message that we try to convey. Yes, definitely. So can you speak more to a little bit more about the the mission and how this emerged from the vision of the founder and artistic director, Ellen Griesedeck? I want to make sure I said that correctly. Yeah. Her work and her vision over the last 20 years, actually. This is a grand, a grand vision that's come to realization. Yeah, yeah. Well, the mural, the mission of the American Mural Project, which has the mural as its centerpiece, is really to wake people up to the art of work occurring around them every day and the value of all work. And of course, that is uh, so important because so much of what we all experience as community members, as people who are members of society, we benefit from every little job that's being performed throughout our communities, from people who deliver our mail, to paving our roads, to cutting down trees, to uh, taking care of us health-wise, to open, keeping our libraries open and shipping goods to us. It, it goes on and on and on and on and on. Well, well <laughs> and, you know what's interesting about that, Ellen? Can I, can, sorry, Amy, I'm sorry. Sure. Can I just um, make a comment about that? Is that I think that the average American worker maybe hasn't always been as valued as could be, whether in their specific workplace or in general. And yet we know, look what happened at the pandemic, especially exactly. at the beginning of the pandemic with people at the grocery store who had to show up and how grateful we all were that they were there. I didn't right. mean to interrupt you, but I wanted to just highlight that. That's recent history. Actually, that's a that's a really uh, good point. That and something that we reflect on here with Ellen and the rest of the AMP team is that um, the American Mural Project is not just about celebrating the less recognized worker or all workers um, during those crises when so often suddenly people wake up, oh, frontline workers, <laughs> um, first responders, et cetera, during crises like 9-11 or floods or um, COVID, <laughs> um, so many different catastrophes that happen. That's when people suddenly uh, wake up a little bit. But we're about keeping people awake every day and making them aware about all the possibilities that are open to young uh, future, the future, you know, the the it hopefully inspiring the the next generation of workers, and inspiring people who are thinking about changing careers. That um, any work that they feel uh, compelled or attracted to doing is of value, and that's it. It is important, and that it doesn't have to have a number of letters after their name for them to have honor and respect. Well. So Amy, what struck me, because um, I've been to the museum, it's in Winstead, I don't know if I said that, it's in Winstead, Connecticut, and actually my husband and I were away for the weekend and we were just putzing around and we stumbled upon it. And it was like, oh my gosh, what a find, why don't people know about this, which is why I wanted to have it on the show. And one of the things that struck me as we moved throughout the exhibit, not only with what we were seeing, but the write-ups, is how Ellen seems eternally curious about people, like curious about people and their work. And in the process of creating these paintings and really three-dimensional art pieces, she engages with people throughout their workday in the community to co-create these tributes. And I was struck by some of the stories, like she follows people around for a day or two and really gets to know them as people and intimately with how they're doing their work. So and she refers to herself as like th this work, she's a worker. So she really identifies with the worker. So it, it really comes out, not just as you read the write-ups, but in the work itself. 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and uh, the way you've described Ellen is pretty accurate. I mean, she's been known to stalk or haunt or follow. You know, there are some really funny stories. Um, so there are two different elements that uh, that just you know that illustrate how compelled she is um, to to and how entranced she is on on the art of work being performed by that normally invisible worker. So there's there are the paintings, there are the portraits that she's created um, and painted, um, and some of which are, are also multimedia pieces. But these are uh, individuals or groups of workers that uh, just have attracted her. As you say, she's so curious, and she sees the way they do their jobs and the expertise and the way they uh, have take pride in their work and ensure that it's really has integrity. And she's just in awe of it. And, and she can't help herself. She is drawn to it. There, there's a story of how she just followed these linemen around, uh, you know, Eversource linemen around Sharon, Connecticut in the town that she lives um, one season. And she just, they were like, I wonder what that lady is doing. She's taking photos, she's talking to them. And she's like, what? She's so curious. What is she? I mean, no one, no one even knows we're here normally, or they just curse us because we're holding up traffic, but not Ellen. She was just so enamored uh, by what they did. And well, it was genuine. In the winter, she was in the process of painting this section of the mural, and it was in the middle of a snowstorm. The power went out, of course, and um, it's in the evening. You know, she's not in her studio at that time, and she um, hears, you know, it's dark, and she hears the, the trucks outside, and she tells her husband, Sam, I'll be right back. And she's like, where are you going? I'll just be right back, and she runs out. And there's the Eversource worker in his truck, finishing up, getting the power back on. And she yells up to him in the snowstorm, thank you. And he's like, crazy lady. Yeah, sure. <laughs> and oh, um, but just... then she starts telling him about the section of the mural and how excited she is and how she got to know these people over the fall. And he was like, you know, my, my kid is a, an art major. Um, I'd love to see this. And she said, sure, anytime. The studio's right there. He says, now? And um, she follows her into the studio after he was done, just to take a quick peek. And um, the expletive that he, you know, uh, uttered at that point was the greatest compliment that she could have gotten, she said. <laughs> he, he, just, uh, he just said, whoa, I, you, really, you really captured it. You were, you're accurate. And you, I know those guys. So it was, you know, it was really funny. That, that is so, I'm like, I'm all verklempt. That, that, that is, that is so moving. Meaning, yeah. meaning. And that's just one of many stories. Honestly. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, meaning that, that, you know, she's not just an observer as an artist might be. She, yeah. she's totally, I love the words you used, compelled, yeah. enthralled, entranced, and enga totally engaged with her, you know, painting subjects, if you will, yeah. but really wants to get into the inner fabric of how they work. Now, um, I, I know we were going to have you in the studio. You're not able to be, I mean, in the museum, you're not able to be there today, but we do have some photos. Before we pull up some of those, we've already been speaking to it essentially, but I, I wanted to ask you anything else you want to say around Ellen's creative process, maybe in how she picks her subjects, and then we can go to some of the photos, but anything um, else you want to say there? She she um, she observes and she's attracted to different people and she is also an artist first and foremost. And so she really thinks about the whole composition and um, has has thought very carefully about all these different components. Um, uh, but she always says, uh, I have heard her say it many times, that to do a portrait, you have to really have a solid deep sense of the person. You're not going to do a literal portrait from a photo, and she never does. She takes lots of photos, but you'll never see the actual photo um, on the mural. Uh, it's a compilation of different uh, aspects that Ellen sees resonating from her memory, from the photos, etc. And uh, it, she really tries to capture the essence of the individual that she's really uh, enamored with. 
um, whether it's um, nobility or uh, or tenacity or um, you know creativity yeah. or passion, you know whatever it is, she's just you know she's she is an artist first and foremost, and so she's composing. She's really trying to to hear the inner voice of of her subject. Well, that totally comes across. Yeah. So we do have some photos. So Jonathan, if you could put up the first photo for us, that would be great. So here is yeah. Ellen and I guess one of her her co-partners. Here. This is a, a gentleman who has helped build our building. His name is Kerry and um, he's volunteering here. You know, he's, he was just hanging around, finishing up some odds and ends because he just loves AMP and he works for Scope Construction. Um, and uh, and and she asked him, you know, I, I want to get the first pieces ready for install. And I've I've taken them apart, gotten them out of my studio, into the truck, out of the truck, through the through the overhead door in the in, in amp, and and now they're laid out, Carrie, on on the uh, on this on the sea of sawhorses. And if if you're available, come and help me out. So yeah. she and she's very good with her power tools. So she has to put them together again, which is what they're doing there. Can we see and that again, Jonathan? Let's just hold that up a little longer. So yeah, yeah. So this is very much like a construction site. Yeah, right? and you can see the white beams in the back is yeah. the bare steel armature that was installed, and which on which the uh, mural has been installed since this photo. But she's putting she and Carrie are putting together these. Um, segments of of honeycomb aluminum that she's painted on because she has to put many of them together to form a giant canvas. They come yeah. in four by eight panels. They're not at all big enough for her portraits. Yeah. So that's something that we're, we're going to talk about the scale. So yeah. let's go to the next photo so we can start seeing this in development. Yeah. So, so this is we're... another another portrait. And this is um, Melissa Bennett, who's a firefighter in Canarsie, Brooklyn, and um, or Canarsie, Queens, in New York City, and she, uh, Ellen, just fell in love with her story and uh, brought a group of interns um, uh, from our digital story work program to do a film and interview of Melissa. But anyway, so you know, she she got to know Melissa. She got to know Melissa's colleagues in the in the fire station. And so, so for our guests, yeah. um, so this is interesting because this woman that's highlighted here, it is a woman Yes. Um, in the exhibit, to your point, it tells a little bit about her story. You do see an interview with her. So you get to know her, it sort of pops off the, the canvas, if you will. Yeah. yeah. But we also, one thing we also get a feel for here is yeah. the scale, starting to get a feel for the scale yeah. of, of this work. Yeah, Melissa is is a, one of a giant piece, and um, we needed two scissor lifts to put her up at, and she is at the topmost portion center of the mural, actually, and it was quite a process. Um, so what happens is, oh, go ahead. I mean, yeah, what happens is, um, we it, when we were installing, we would prepare Ellen and her team would prepare a number of the mural sections, such as Melissa, such as the heavy machinery camp mechanics that were in the previous photo. So they would be prepared, leaning against walls, you know, waiting for their turn to get installed. And then when there was a significant number of them, the rent, the lifts would be rented and the crew would be called and uh, many of them vo volunteers and they would have at it. And interestingly, well, something you don't see here is that they are uh, they are permanently installed, but they are also installed on a very clever steel uh, mechanism uh, created by a local welder, uh, John Jackier for Ellen and uh, Don Breslauer, um, that allows Ellen to determine the depth of each piece. So it's three dimensional. There are you know yeah. not every piece is flat. It's yeah, like so a giant jigsaw, three-dimensional jigsaw puzzle. Yeah. So can we go to the next photo so we can start to see yeah. the flavor for that? And what, what we could see is also you get a flavor for the dimensionality of it right. as well as the scale. Although, as you and I both know, this does not do justice to the experience where you really get a sense there of the massiveness of this. Yeah. 
there are three different viewing levels. There's the ground level, there's the mid viewing level and the upper viewing level, all available via elevator and stairs and all connected. And you're right, this is, um, it, it's hard to convey scale in a photograph. Um, but in this photograph, you can also tell not just the three dimensionality about it, but there are hints that there are many textures and mediums in which Ellen works. And that's also an important thing to think about. Well, and we could see here, like for example, in the middle there, that like that's a that's a uh, a spaceship. That's the yes, rocket. That's, yeah, right. we, we see. I think is that nine eleven police worker there. You know, um, start- it's, it's a police officer, Ray, uh, Edwin Raymond, and then there's the space studies, the rocket ship, and on the rocket ship, you'll see there's an exhaust, and that's uh, made out of uh, plastic resin. Um, underneath the sailboat, there's also a lot of plastic resin. Then there's, uh, on the very lower level, there's this big uh, wheat field or hay field, and that's made out of uh, a gesso. So it's very textured. There are other mediums like marble, um, uh, clay, paper, textiles, wood. So, so just so our, our viewers know, this is 120 feet long and five stories high. So if we go to the next photo, we could get a sense of another viewing station. This is the top one where right. you can start to view it from you know different levels and different angles. And this one is from the opposite side of the mural as we were just, and at from the top, as you've just mentioned. And um, I will let you know, it's something you and I didn't really talk about beforehand. Um, and that is that the mural itself is approximately 5% installed on the front face that you're seeing here. She's waiting to install the last 5% um, for after she installs the ramp gallery, which is yet another walkway that is behind this mural. I don't know if you can see, there is a depth behind yes. the mural and people will eventually have public access to that. And it will be a tunnel of art and it will be dedicated specifically to the collaborative projects, which are the second component that Ellen has really worked on. So Okay, so let's let's pause there for a sec because I want to come back to that. Yeah, that's interesting because when my husband and I were there, we did go around because I was like, I want to see like what the inner workings are. We did peek behind there, but but now maybe can we go to? We have a short clip of actually Ellen in action. So, yeah. could, Jonathan, can we run that? It's a favorite of mine. Yeah. So um, the sound is kind of cool on it too, but it's okay. This really gives you a perspective of the scale, I think. Yeah, so uh, amazing. So so she's not only this this painter with such a painterly, illu- illus- illustrative style, but she's really like a mechanic, a construction work, kind of like all these, this, these different mm-hmm. mediums that you talked about and at scale, I mean, yeah. it's incredible. And I love what she, she says that she, she likes, um, mixing your own paints. So, I mean, it's really, so, so let's step back for a second. Um, how did this, she's had this vision for 20 years. Um, can Mm -hmm. you speak a little bit about how she's, she's not only done all this herself, she's involved people in the co-creation of this. And she had this vision for 20 years of a place to house this particular piece. How did the museum itself come to be? Well, I'm going to start with the first half of your question. And that is, so Ellen, you know, over 20 years ago, more like 22 plus years ago, um, she really uh, had the opportunity through commissions to do portraits of of workers in their place of work. And one of the commissions was at Boeing in Washington state. And she came home feeling that she couldn't do it justice in just a normal size painting. And, you know, she kept making it bigger and bigger. And her husband was like, it's big enough. And she was like, no, it's not big enough. And eventually she felt that it has to be, make a loud enough noise, be big enough to be unignorable. And for, especially for young people. And she really felt like, hey, our kids aren't even paying attention to the work that's going on around them every day. And can you imagine our kids who have so much support and love and, 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 uh, and, and they have, they have 
a good life. You know, can you imagine kids who are in a little bit more of a struggle? They they aren't being uh, shown all the opportunities and the wonderful work that is happening around them all the uh, all over the place. And so she really thought the best way to wake the younger generation up about this was to involve them in making the art with her. And her very first collaborative project, because she, you know, she didn't know how this was going to go. She thought, well, let's give it a try. She connected with uh, a colleague of hers who was a, a potter um, in, uh, in the Berkshires, Elaine Hoffman, and they, and Elaine guided her um, because they want, she said, why don't we do the foundry worker? <clears throat> this is a very fiery piece um, visually in the lower left uh, corner of the mural project, and it is made in um, of clay. And Ellen did not make it. 250 kids in eight different schools in three different states, Massachusetts, New York, and Connecticut, made this. Ellen, of course, talked to them about this fire, this fiery work of a foundry worker making steel in the Detroit Ford Motor Plant, because <laughs> that's what they they made their own steel um, in the intense heat. And what an appropriate medium for these kids to explore um, with both color and the medium because pottery, of course, ceramics needs intense heat. And so she talked to these different groups of students, K through 12, not all at the same time. And they all created a, a tessellated uh, piece that came together, um, which they also glazed. And she talked to them about color and how to convey heat and shape and shadow. Um, and eventually it actually was produced and it was a very successful collaborative experience where she was able to get different kids from different communities together, interacting and creating together and understanding and exploring work. Yeah. On so many levels, Amy, on so many levels, yeah. This is so fantastic, Me meaning bringing together, you know, school age children from all different backgrounds, inciting their imagination in terms of what is possible in the world of work, getting inside this particular foundry worker's life, um, in addition to giving them some art lessons in how to manipulate the art materials that would reflect this person's work and experience. So on so many levels, I mean, it, it's education, it's art, it's it's it really vocational exposure and training. So very rich. And I know, I, I know we, we could talk forever <laughs> just about this topic, um, but we only have five more minutes. So, oh, so God, a couple other things. I know it's going so quickly. So, so it's incredible. And, and, and she since has gone on to involve so many other people of all ages with various projects over many, many years to where it came to the point where, where can we start assembling this? and integrating it into a showpiece and in a museum. And so why this building and how this building sort of further amplifies, I know you like to use that word a lot, am amplifies your mission and what needed to be done to the building to accommodate this huge piece. Right, so what better place, uh, Ellen and the AMP board thought, than a, a former mill building, a former factory um, that really is a testament to American workers. So the board considered at one point an outdoor uh, 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 home for the mural and then a, a very staunch uh, advisor to Ellen said, no, you'll lose the scale. So they went back to the idea of an old mill building and they looked all over the place. Um, they looked locally in New York, in Torrington, in Winstead and in a number of other places for at old mill buildings. And this one just really spoke to, um, to, to Ellen and the AMP board for a variety of reasons. One, it's an old knitting mill. It was part of a larger complex of seven buildings that was the Whiting Mills knitting mill. And it's on the historic register right now. It's over a hundred years old. It also is right next door to a, uh, a 
two of the other former mill buildings, the artists at Whiting Mill, so a number of creative workers. Um, it was within, you know, 45 minute drive of Ellen's home. It was in an old mill town that really would benefit from revitalization. So the board really got excited about having impact beyond just establishing a cultural institution. Um, it was uh, a more diverse community than exists in many parts of Northwest Connecticut. There were so many components to choosing Winstead and this particular mill building. And it's just, it's a, it is a perfect home. It's like the cathedral to the American workers, these old mill buildings. And, and it really, when you go in, I just can't overstate enough just the experience when you walk through the doors. It's like, oh, the huge, huge, which I know the, the ceilings needed to be raised. We only have three more minutes. Um, I'm wondering, I know. Can you speak to, so, so the museum was opened. I, I know this was all in process starting as early as 2018. They secured you to try to, you know, lead the execution and, and take a lot of day-to-day -day stuff off of Ellen's plate, which is incredible that she's did everything. And, and so now you've been able to kind of shepherd the muse overseeing the museum itself and the doors opened in June, 2022. So not that long ago, mm -hmm. um, we stumbled upon it a year later in, in this past June. So um, in the last two minutes, can you speak to what is the overall vision for moving forward? Cause it's, 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 it's even beyond this to amplify your Great. mission even further. Yeah. So um, yes, we've only been open for a year and a half. Um, it's been very exciting to finally open to the public and what um, AMP is aiming to do, we've just finished a uh, three-year strategic plan and are going on to our next, uh, formulating our next strategic plan. But our vision is for um, AMP to expand ways for people to engage with the exhibit, it, for instance, with that ramp gallery, with all the collaborative projects, to uh, invite people in for further exploration. Um, in December, we're going to be launching a really exciting component, which is audio tours where people can point to different mural subjects and hear the story of those vo the voices of those mural subjects or Ellen's story about how she interacted with them. Um, and that's a really exciting uh, addition. We also have a number of education programs for um, uh, young adults and adults and also for uh, school age children that are expanding by leaps and bounds. We just launched this past weekend a teen art studio where teens like take over the program space. Every so there's, there's so much. We might have to have you on again. Yeah. But I'm <laughs> and there sorry. are events and at music. And I know our time. Way. I know our time. I'm sorry to cut you off. Our time is <laughs> up to an end, but there's so much more that you're doing and it's so exciting. So if anybody was interested, inspired in any way, how, how might they contact you? Well, the best thing is to go to AmericanMuralProject.org and they can stay connected to us with the newsletter by signing up or following us on social media, but they can also email info at AmericanMuralProject.org or call us as well. Okay, fantastic. All right, Amy, thank you so much for coming on the show. I'm Suze Shaner with Community Forum. Until next time, thanks for joining us. Thanks, Suze.